Hi, welcome to molar volume of carbon dioxide. Uh, for this lab, you're going to need to know what an ideal gas is. And an ideal gas is a gas in which the attractive and repulsive forces uh, between the molecules of gas are negligible. So they're not interacting with each other at all. Uh, Avogadro's law states that equal volumes of ideal gases under identical temperatures and pressures contain an equal number of molecules. So at the same temperature and pressure, one mole of any ideal gas has the same volume of one mole of any other gas. That volume is the molar volume. So under standard conditions, which is STP, where the pressure is one atmosphere and the temperature is 273 Kelvin, the molar volume of any ideal gas is 22.4 liters. We can also use uh, the ideal gas law to express the relationship between pressure vo uh, volume moles present and temperature with the appropriate constant R. So we have our PV equals NRT. Uh, make sure when you do your when you pick your pressure units that that's the same units that are that match up with your universal gas constant. Uh, again, temperature is always in Kelvin. Here's the number of moles. Our volume in liters. So we measure the volume of a known mass of an ideal gas at a specific set of conditions from state one, which we're going to label with a one, and then change the conditions to state two. We can manipulate the aforementioned equation to relate to these two conditions. So here we have uh, P1 V1 over NRT1, let's say it was 298, and we've got P2 V2 uh, over NR. T2, which we'll say is 273, and we can figure out what the relationship is between these two states. There's a lot of, there's a, there's a few more calculations in this, um, but we decided that it, they made a little bit more sense after you saw the experiment. So there's going to be a second chalk talk uh, after we've gathered some data and you've had an opportunity to see what we're doing. Uh, so hang on tight. Uh, if you have any questions at the end, Again, please don't hesitate to reach out to your instructional team, your TA, head TAs, Dr. Vitarelli. We're all here to help and support you, especially in this very strange time. Uh, I hope you guys have a good rest of your day, and thank you very much for your attention. So we're now determining the molar volume of CO2. So what you'll need to do first is you'll need to get a Erlenmeyer flask and a stopper and actually weigh it while it's stoppered. So that'll be the mass of the flask itself, the stopper, and also the air that's trapped inside. We'll then be getting one small piece of dry ice. So we're going to take a piece, we're gonna chop it into like a little piece like this, place it in here, and we're going to let that sublimate without the stopper. So, and you also don't want to, I guess, Jocelyn. disturb and jostle in any way. So, once you add the dry ice, just wait until it's all sublimated, not with the stopper, because if you stopper it, it'll build up pressure as the dry ice sublimates. So, at this point, we'll just cut ahead to... Yeah. When I so, right now, the dry ice is almost sublimating. Uh, once it disappears completely, we'll stopper it, uh, and then we'll weigh it, and it should weigh slightly more than what we initially did, or what we initially had with just atmospheric air inside the flask. It'll now have, theoretically, just mostly, or all, carbon dioxide. And notice how I just used one finger, I stabilized the flask with these two fingers, and I just pressed gently with this finger. You don't want to jam it really hard because the flask might shatter. So we're going to weigh it. Okay, so now we need to find the volume of this Erlenmeyer flask. Now, on the side, it says that it's a 125 milliliter flask up to about this line, but we actually need to find 
the volume of this entire flask up to the stopper where the air was. We need to find the volume of air. The way we can do that is we can fill this up to the brim with water and then measure the volume via a graduated cylinder. So we'll take water, and it doesn't have to be DI, it can just be straight from the sink, and carefully pour it in near to the very top. And now we're gonna add this carefully. We're gonna stabilize the flask, and you're going to gently and not forcefully push the cork in. Now, if you notice, I still need to fill this up with water because there's still an air bubble. So let's just fill it all the way to the top right before it spills over. That's why I have this paper towel here because it will spill over. So just be very careful. Push it and then gently with one finger push it in nicely. No excess force is required and then we're just gonna wipe this up wipe the sides off and note that it doesn't look like there's any air bubbles so what you can do is carefully remove the stopper once again now we're going to record this in two steps because this is a 125 mil flask it's obviously over 125 and this graduated cylinder only holds about 100. So what we can do is we'll just pour it in here almost to the top and just record in two separate batches. So it doesn't matter where you do it to. So just record on a piece of paper. So this looks like it's actually exactly 75, 75.0. Wow, hmm. good job. I'll just just right off to the side. And then what I'll do is I'll just dump the excess back into a random beaker. Not random, it's a little quarter. And then we're gonna dump the rest. So that is 65, 68.5. Okay. So here are the calculations that you have to do for the um, molar volume of CO2 lab. Uh, first, you're going to convert lab barometric pressure from inches of mercury to atmospheres using these um, equations here, uh, these relationships. Um, and then you'll convert lab temperature from Celsius to Kelvin. And, you know, we've given you both the pressure in inches of mercury and temperature in Celsius, and you just have to easily convert that into uh, atmospheres and Kelvin. So then our first step, uh, I guess, you know, doing calculations and everything, uh, we have to find the density of air at STP, uh, which is 1.29 grams per liter. We have to calculate the air density at lab temperature and pressure. So if we have, I guess, labeling, I'll do one at lab and two at STP, um, we have P1, V1 over N1, P1 equals P2, P2 over N2, T2. So that's just the ideal gas equation comparison. So we'll change this so that we have E1, V1 over, and we're changing N to grams over molecular weight, still times T1 equals P1, or P2, V2 over grams molecular weight, T2. 
since because we have the molecular weight of anything is just you know grams per mole. So now we have this relationship here. And if you notice here, here and here is density. So if you kind of flip it, so this is I have row one and row two for density. So that turns into, if you come down here, P1 and then molecular weight actually comes up here over row 1 T1 equals pressure 2 row 2 T2 and since the molecular weight of CO2 is the same these cross out and so you'll be using this identity to figure out um, the air density at lab, actually this one, at lab temperature and pressure. So you'll be finding this using, you know, the density of air, 1.29 grams per liter at STP. So now we have to determine the volume of CO2 gas sample at STP. So as this relationship right here where I have this sub one is lab temperature pressure and then two is at STP, you can just do P1, P1 over T1 equals P2, D2 over T2, and you'll solve for V2 equals P1, V1, T2 over T1 and P2. So now we come over here. So uh, we have to calculate the mass of air contained in the flask. So the mass of air, which is MA, equals rho, or you can also just write D, density of air, let you decide which letter you want to do, times volume of the flask. So it's pretty simple. Uh, six, we actually cal calculate the mass of CO2 contained in the flask. Now, that's once we add the dry ice, let it sublimate, stop at the flask, how much, how, like what's the mass of all that CO2 in there? So we have the mass of the flask, stopper, and air. That's M1 equals MF, MF plus MA. So this mass right here is the flask plus air. You have mass of flask stopper CO2. This whole thing is M2, and that's MF of the flask plus MCO2. Combine these together, you want to do um, this minus this. So you have M2 minus M1 equals quantity MF plus MCO2 minus MF plus MA. These cancel out and you're left with this equals MCO2 minus MA. So then to calculate the mass of CO2, you'll just have to arrange you'll have to rearrange this to find the mass of CO2 since we know the mass of air from up here and we know M1 minus M2 from our experiment itself. Um, so from seven, calculate the moles of CO2 gas contained in the flask. So this is just N moles equals the mass of CO2 over the molar mass of CO2 and the molar mass of CO2 is 44.01 grams per mole. And then finally, calculate the molar volume of CO2 gas. So the molar volume is known as V bar. So V bar equals V2 
from number four. V2 over N, which we just calculated here. So it's the volume per mole, or molar volume, and that'll be your final answer.